Okay, folks, so let's talk about standard error of measurement. I know this is at the tail end of your lecture sequence, um, but this one is really important, so don't skip it. Although, again, if you're skipping it, you won't have read, seen this. Uh, but a big part of your homework is use is being able to kind of interpret and explain standard error of measurement, and it's going to be pretty key going forward. So let us kind of progress. So, um, okay. So recall that reliability can be defined in terms of the proportion of observed variance that is true. So that means we can define unreliability as the proportion of observed variance that is error. And that is, and that is uh, one minus reliability because it's just the proportion of error that is not explained as I've produced here. This has also got a lot more detail in the course notes. So be sure to check these out. It might be helpful to have those course notes open while we're going through this. Cool, because I think it's equation three, uh, in my, but it might've gotten reordered because of how I write the notes. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about how can reliability or unreliability of a test be expressed in terms of the available observed variability, because typically that's what we're interested in. And essentially that's standard error of measurement. It's the average, let me just make sure. Uh, yeah. It's the average variability in observed scores attributable to error. So as any statistical standard error, it can be used to create a confidence interval around the statistic that it estimates, which in our case is T. Since we don't have a raw score T, we instead have to create a raw score, or, or we, since we don't have true score T, we instead have to create a confidence interval around X. So whatever our test score is as an index of how confident we are, that true score falls within that confidence interval for a given individual. For example, on the uh, verbal reasoning subtest of the GRE, the GRE is uh, reported to have a reliability of 0.93, which is pretty good, and a standard error of measurement of 2.2 on a scale that ranges from 30 or 130 to 70. So thus, an observed ver verbal reasoning score of 155 has a 95% confidence interval of about four points. So at score of 155, we are 95% confident that the true score falls somewhere between 150.8 and 159.2. A little bit of note about the GRE. Um, my friend uh, Harrison would be very uh, grumpy at me if I didn't point this out, uh, that the GRE is actually estimated using item response theory, not classical test theory. And we will cover item response theory because it's awesome and it's way more useful than classical test theory. Although classical test theory, pretty useful. Um, and so we can calculate confidence intervals and I have some examples written in the, embedded in the lecture notes about how estimates for our PISA data can be estimated the same way. So um, let me check to make sure. All right. I think I might've just copied and pasted my entire lecture notes in here. Let's see if I've tidied this up. Oh, I have, how convenient. Cool. So ignore some of that. Actually, no. Um, so let's back up and actually talk about what this equation is. So the standard error of measure is the error associated with trying to estimate a true score for a specific test. And this error can come from many sources, but in order to get that value, we can multiply the unreliable portion of variance by the standard deviation of our test. 
to obtain that standard error of measurement. That's it. Cool. It's really straightforward. I've got equations all floating over the place, including right here, where we can calculate standard error of measurement just by multiplying the standard deviation times the square root of one minus our reliability. That's it. And that gives us a really nice estimate. All right, let me um, back up to make sure I hit all the key ideas. Oh no, I have written this all down. Yeah, I have way more detail in the lecture notes. So please read them instead of just, um, yeah, yeah, I cannot talk today, but we're going to get through this little piece right now. Okay. So here is a token example. I encourage you to work through the examples also in the, in the, um, book and the lecture notes in using R, um, as well as the ones I gave you on the homework. So here uh, we are using those same three continuous items to give us an estimate of standard error of measurement. And as you may recall, or you can just calculate this yourself, the total variance is 254.41. And we can get the standard deviation of that by taking the square root to get just under 16, which means that our standard error of measurement is 16 minus, or 16 times the square root of one minus our reliability, or the square root of just about 0.1, which gives us uh, a value of five, which is a pretty wide standard error. However, um, it might be helpful to have context about these measures, which I have not given you here because the data are made up. So uh, that is it. Please read the notes. Standard error of measurement is a really important concept. And these lectures are merely an orientating overview. Cool. I'll see you later. Bye.